in banking system. Artificial intelligence enabled banking transformation is the emerging area nowadays. I also welcome Shri Honorable Shri Dharmveer Ji Batra, President Governing Body, IBPG College Panipat. Under the able guidance of our management, whatsoever we are able to do in the college is because of their blessings and their guidance. These kinds of webinars are the need of the art, especially under these pandemic conditions. I am sure that this talk will be very useful for all of us. I convey my best wishes for the success of the webinar. I congratulate Dr. Sunish Sharma, Professor Ajapal, Professor Madhvi, Professor Ashwini Gupta, and entire, uh, entire commerce and management faculty of the college for taking this initiative, which will be definitely very beneficial for all of us and definitely for our students. The world is facing the most difficult time and we all are in the impact of COVID-19 nowadays. During this rare situation, the role of the scientists, technocrats can't be ignored. I salute to the scientists of the country who put timely efforts in developing two different vaccines, which most of the developed countries can't do. Mushkil samay hai, thoda bachav rakhna hai, lekin hume hosla nahi harna hai. Kuch sikha kar ye door bhi gujar jayega, fir se har insan muskurayega, निराश न होना दोस्तों कल आज है और आज कल हो जाएगा ये मुश्किल समय गुजर जाएगा थोड़ा प्रिकॉशंस लेके चलना है बाय टेकिंग ऑल द प्रिकॉशंस ऑफ कोविड-19 एंड फॉलोइंग द गाइडलाइंस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट वी आर टू कंटिन्यू विद आवर एकेडमिक एक्टिविटीज एंड डेफिनेटली इन द ऑनलाइन मोड एट लास्ट आई अगेन वार्मली वेलकम टू डे स्पीकर श्री विकास राजदान जी डेलीगेट्स फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड द स्टूडेंट आई होप दिस वेबिनार विल मीट इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. And now I invite Mr. Vikas Rajdanji to deliver his lecture, please. Mr. Vikas Rajdanji, please. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Principal Sir, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar Garg, uh, the convener of this program, Dr. Sumit Sharma, and uh, the co-conveners, uh, Professor Ajay Pal, Professor Madhvi, and Professor Ashwini Gupta. Uh, I also welcome and thank uh, Dr. Dharamveer Batra, who has taken uh, time from his precious schedule and uh, care to join uh, in this talk. Uh, when, uh, Dr. when Professor Ashwini approached me uh, and asked me to deliver a lecture on uh, some fintech domain, a topic on fintech domain, I was kind of uh, uh, I was kind of looking for a topic which would be of interest to commerce students. So as I work uh, in uh, State Bank of India, and I also am uh, I also have an IT background, and I have been in technology in the banking sector for quite a long time now. I thought that uh, the transition that banking is facing right now, uh, 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 I should make the students aware of this. Uh, most of you will, would be aware of it, but uh, certainly uh, if uh, you know beforehand what the future holds, then you can take proactive measures at this point of time and uh, uh, fine tune or align your career prospect, career goals so that uh, in future you are better off when you go enter into the job market. Especially commerce students always look forward to a career in banking. So, uh, uh, now I will uh, be a presenter and I have prepared a slide uh, slideshow and uh, I will share it with you and uh, uh, I don't know whether we have a Q&A but uh, in the end if you have any questions uh, you are most welcome to ask them. So uh, uh, Professor Ashwini if I can uh, take over the presentation. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I have been uh, removed from the meeting twice uh, in the last 10-15 uh, minutes. So if this happens again, I will join. So please be patient. So there is some problem when probably more people are joining. So some of us might uh, get removed.
Uh, the slide is visible, right? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. So the agenda, as already uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar Garg, is for today's presentation is artificial intelligence in banking, and that to not from an IT perspective, but from a banker's perspective, because all of you are uh, commerce or business management students. So I would like to give you an overview of the current trends that uh, AI holds in banking and what the future looks like. Uh, some of you who have a liking in technology can think of pursuing a job in artificial intelligence uh, within the financial sector. However, I would like to add here that most of the job profiles would still require you to gain some knowledge in computer systems or programming uh, or mathematics or statistics. So this is the agenda for uh, today's uh, talk. I will uh, uh, like uh, I will go through each of these in the subsequent slides, and uh, uh, that's how I have structured it. So initially, uh, the first slide is uh, if you can mute, please. So uh, I uh, I have already been uh, by Professor Ashwini and uh, Dr. Patra. So uh, I will skip this slide. I just wanted to add to this that I belong to Karnal, um, which is uh, near to Panipat. So I'm also one of you. <clears throat> so, uh, Today's webinar that is artificial intelligence and what are the implications in the banking sector, more so broadly on the financial sector. Uh, by definition, artificial intelligence is something which involves simulation of human intelligence in machines for problem solving for day to day tasks. In addition to that, they also have a concept called self learning. Over the last decade, artificial intelligence has grown from just being a pipe dream into something that is drive that is the driving force behind the fourth industrial revolution as uh, most of you would know that this fourth industrial revolution is uh, is, some, is a term which was coined by uh, klaus schwab uh, in some years back uh, which uh, basically uh, def redefines of how we are going to live work communicate spend time in future so it is reshaping everything right from government, education, healthcare, sports, commerce, everything, every aspect of your life will have some footprint of artificial intelligence in the future. And you will be surprised to know, uh, I will just give you some examples of how artificial intelligence is already uh, uh, got deep into our day-to-day uh, 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 -to -day lives, even now. <clears throat> Uh, the artificial intelligence in banks, that is the uh, what you call the main topic for today's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, banks uh, did start extensively using AI and MI uh, some time back uh, to uh, basically automate their business processes and also uh, in areas to enhance customer experience. Uh, like uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Ashwin told, fraud detection or AML, anti-money laundering. Uh, in designing new products for customers, in uh, complying with regulatory guidelines. I will touch all these uh, specifics in uh, the subsequent slides. As with every other industry uh, that AI is touching, it is redefining the uh, business processes with banks and adding a value to the product and the process, which was not conceivable some years back. The impact of AI on banks is growing exponentially now. We will soon have a uh, like uh, uh, we will soon have hyper intelligent banks like they say, which will know more about their customers that than even the customer himself. And let me tell you, this is not an overstatement. Uh, it is a fact that if you are active in social media, like most of you would be, uh, like Facebook or Twitter, these companies have enough data to describe you and your personal traits than someone who has known you for years. It is estimated that every person on this planet is generating around 1.7 megabits of data each second. 
uh, yeah, each second. And if he has a digital footprint, definitely. And just imagine if we are able to dig into this big data, how much information can we gather about each and every individual on this planet? From 2010 onwards, the concept of uh, uh, what you call uh, deep learning uh, has evolved in banking. So uh, what has happened is that, uh, uh, Mr. Ashwini? Hello. Yeah, please. Uh, the slide, are you able to see it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then there's a problem with my uh, just a moment huh? ah, please please. no problem now it is visible uh, the slide is visible to you but i cannot see it. i am only able to see the content just a moment. So what is the slide number on your? Uh, hello, Artificial intelligence history. I think the history of artificial intelligence. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I, I. Yeah, it, uh, I am back. So uh, we are at slide number five. Right. Continue, please. Please continue. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, we are at slide number five, right? Artificial intelligence history, right? So uh, before I go into the details of how AI is impact impacting the financial sector, I would uh, like to brief you about the uh, history of AI, how it has evolved since the early 1950s. The concept of AI was evolved, uh, uh, started with basically the Turing test. Uh, at Turing test that was conducted by a scientist named Alan Turing. Uh, yeah. Vikas, please unmute yourself. Vikas, Vikas ji, please unmute. Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are audible, please. Uh, uh, the problem is that uh, I'm being forced muted uh, by somebody. I don't know how that's uh, possible. I don't know. I'm just checking it out. Please, you continue. Uh, again, I was uh, muted, so I think. Uh, okay, I will check. Uh, Vikas ji, please you continue. I will check the, what is the problem. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. So, are you able to see the slide? Because it's again. Yeah, because please continue. Slide is visible. Uh, are you able to hear me, please? Yes, yes, yes. Please, because continue. No, uh, uh, Professor Ashwini, what is happening is that uh, I'm getting muted, uh, forced muted. So when I switch to the slide, I am forced muted. So. No, uh, no, but you are audible, please. Okay. Now I'm audible, but uh, before that I was not. Okay. Yeah. 
so i will go back to the presentation so uh, where uh, where was i uh, that uh, this turing test this was this was conducted in the early 50s by alan turing a scientist who proved that machines could think like humans to a certain extent and uh, uh, during this time during the early phases of ai from 1950 to 50s to 70s scientists developed uh, what you call machines that could mimic human neural networks in technology neural networks are basically uh, uh, what you call uh, 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 interconnected computers that work much like the neurons in our human brain using programs they can recognize hidden patterns and correlations in raw data from the 1980s then the second phase of ai came uh, from 1980s to 2010 uh, uh, the advances in machine learning gained momentum and machine learning basically means a concept where computer systems can learn from specific tasks without uh, learn to do specific tasks basically without being uh, explicitly programmed to do so machine learning systems learn from their data which is being input and then evaluating the efficacy of the output their, resp their responses their own responses and this process of self evaluation makes the machine more intelligent intelligent uh, as uh, time goes by some of the examples that you may come across which have an embedded machine learning concept in them would be self driving cars which like tesla or google self driving car the purchase recommendations that you get on amazon or uh, netflix amazon prime they are all they all have some kind of a machine learning concept within embedded within them in banks uh, fraud detection is uh, is an area where machine learning uh, is being used very widely now uh in my next slide i have already uh, touched the previous uh, uh, terms in the previous slide just for the sake of better understanding i inserted this picture which shows the relationship among these terms so uh, uh this deep learning is a subset of machine learning machine learning is again a subset of artificial intelligence which is the broader concept that is redefining many things around us now so artificial intelligence basically makes it possible for machines to learn from their own experiences adjust to new inputs and perform human like tasks some ai examples that you may have heard of are like alphago i don't know how many of you know about it but alphago is an artificial intelligence based system which defeated the world champion uh, lee sedol uh, at the most complex human board game uh, which is called go it's a chinese board game this happened in the year 2016 why i chose this particular example is to highlight how ai based machines have evolved themselves using reinforced learning uh this alphago was a, a system developed by a company a british company called deep mind and the developers used hundreds of go games as input to the system they later let, let that system play on its own millions of times the iterations were like it ran into millions and each time the machine was learning from its own past mistakes this self concept self learning concept basically in machines is what makes ai so exciting now because now once you have created a machine and you have uh, put it in an autopilot mode the machine is evolving on its own the world champion lee sedol lost lost to this computer 1 4 the com and i would like to mention that this game can the complexity of go game can be gauged from the fact that there are 10 raised to the power 360 10 raised to the power 360 possible moves that a person can make in go self driving cars as i already mentioned are another very highly popular ai system which relies heavily on deep learning and natural language processing using ai technologies computers have been trained to accomplish specific tasks by processing large amounts of data and recognizing patterns within that data artificial intelligence uh, i would say can be broadly classified into strong and narrow ai narrow ai is what we are seeing right now it is something like uh, um, alexa or uh, a self driving car which is uh, what you call configured to do a particular task 
so it cannot uh, it cannot adapt to something which uh, which is new if it is within the domain for which it was programmed it will but if it is something entirely different then it breaks so this is called narrow ai strong ai is something which is only a concept a theoretical concept right now it will be like the machines will have their own self consciousness they will uh, they will basically uh, surpass human intelligence and the ability of the human brain so we are a long way off from that concept now so this is more about artificial intelligence i just wanted you to brief about the terms that i am using in this slide so that you have an idea of uh, what i am talking about now coming to the main topic that is artificial intelligence in banks banks have uh, really started to leverage ai basically to drive profits and also to reduce risks compliance risks regulatory risks ai is also helping banks to enhance the customer experience by offering them tailor so tailored service products ai is helping banks in all domains right from customer service to compliance to risk management uh there are some of the, the uh, topics that i will cover in the next slides that will give you an idea of how specifically in specific areas uh, ai has uh, made an impression within banks so uh, uh, um, the topics that i have listed like customer service credit decisions i will go dig in uh, slightly go into the details of each one of them so that you uh, know where banks uh, how banks have adapted to this new technology and what is the message that i would like to pass on to the students who are looking forward to careers in banking this is a screenshot of uh, from yesterday from uh, my state bank of india's website uh, that's the indian website uh, when you see uh, in the bottom right corner is a chat bot or a virtual assistant as it is known and uh, it says ask sia so if you can see the pointer uh like this one here so applications like these like chatbots or virtual assistants are gaining popularity with banks and customers and i'm sure that most of you must have seen or interacted with uh, some of uh, some kind of a virtual assistant on a company website the companies are preferring these chatbots as the first touch point for their customer support Yesterday when I visited this site to create a, 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 what you call a first hand example of how this concept of uh, natural language processing that these chatbots use works this is an AI concept so uh, uh, the, my I have captured those interactions also so what I did is uh, sitting in germany i wanted to know that how can i apply for an nri loan and whether i am eligible or not and in the next slides i have uh, captured this interaction in the screenshot on the left you can see uh, that i did not click on the specific button for non resident indian but rather used plain english text to ask my question my question was unstructured like you can see that i want to have a maudi wala i'm an nri and want to have a loan so it was unstructured it could i could uh, what do you call shuffle the words and still the response that i got from the assistant was similar so i have underlined the two questions that i asked one was that can i take a loan being an nri and the other was i am an nri and want to buy a house in both the cases the response that i got was more or less what i expected that the assistant directed me to a particular web page where i could uh, like fill a form and uh, and apply for a loan or check my eligibility the ability of a machine to understand and process this unstructured language is possible through embedded ai going forward uh, i will i'm sure that with further enhancements and with self learning within these bots these bots will be able to correspond and respond to far more complex queries than this uh and this uh, and this uh, what you call this um, uh, uh this query from my side can be text based or even voice assistance like in google or uh, alexa you must have noticed whatever you ask them they always most of the times they come up with an intelligent answer like what you expect they have that information and and sometimes they try to create a connect between what you asked earlier and what you are asking now so they also have that contextual 
uh, uh, ability to understand and connect two different questions. Uh, these chatbots, uh, the one that I'm showing you on the screen, have really enhanced customer service. And uh, uh, in a very short span of time, the customer can get all the needed information just by visiting the website. And uh, I'd like to tell you that uh, you may not know, but when you approach a State Bank of India branch, it used to be that a walk-in customer costs the bank around 50 rupees. Even if you don't transact anything, the moment you enter the branch and even take out a voucher and come back, you cost you cost us 50 rupees. The reason for that is that we have to create that brick and mortar branch for you. We have to have staff for you. There are other operating costs. When you divide those, uh, when you divide it by the number of walk-in customers, this is the cost that we used to get. And in this case, you can see that the bank is hardly spending anything. Just a server somewhere on a cloud is catering to customer requests. And so uh, just think that how much time the bank is saving by filtering most of the customer queries at the first stage itself. And uh, when I clicked on this NRI link that was there on this chatbot, I was redirected to a site, uh, an NRI a loan eligibility site, and it, it even told me what is what qualifies, who qualifies to be an NRI, so that uh, I know beforehand that whether I am eligible to apply for an NRI role or not. The whole process, I tell you, was very seamless and satisfying. And uh, I know uh, most of you must have visited State Bank of India sometime or the other in your um, for your banking activities. And getting this kind of an information from a big branch, uh, I mean, uh, you just can't imagine that happening in such a short span of time. So banks are evaluating their customers these days over a 360 degree view to recommend tailored products and services, which I already told you for specific individuals. So for bank, you are the customer and whatever is being targeted or pitched for you is only based on your traits or your interactions with the bank in the past. With AI based customer service solutions, we can authenticate the validity of ID cards, auto populate fields and perform live face recognition and uh, conduct these what you call these Siebel security checks. Uh, and uh, I tell you that if you're opening an online account, a savings bank account, uh, you can open it in around 15 minutes. That's it. That's all the time you need. Uh, this may be of uh, really a surprise for some of you that you will be amazed to know that how even a bank like State Bank of India in India is using artificial intelligence to uh, what you call uh, track customer sentiments. So what we are doing uh, on this is on a pilot basis. Uh, the feed from our CCTV cameras is being used to analyze customer sentiment. The people who are within the branch what is their response? How they, how what is was the sentiment on their face when they came into the branch, and what is the what is the expression when they are leaving? And this kind of a technology, just imagine that how deep AI can go uh, uh, when it wants to collect information about human behavior, and how we can leverage this information to create better customer service, better customer products. With AI integrated into all aspects of banking business, the customer experience is going to be enriched more and more. I mean, it's uh, uh, sky is, even sky is not the limit here. Banks will be able to provide faster and better service to customers, and customers will also be more satisfied with their banking experiences. Coming to the second use of AI in banks, where uh, you are making credit decisions. So in the field of credit, uh, AI solutions are helping banks to make smarter uh, underwriting decisions by utilizing a variety of factors that uh, that were not possible in the old uh, infrastructure. Uh, AI powered uh, underwriting solutions help banks to assess borrowers with little or no credit history. I know that most of you would approach a bank and uh, tell, uh, ask them to uh, give you a loan, and they would say that uh, we need to see some of your credit history. They will check your Siebel, they will check your Siebel score, and it will be a blank because you never applied for a loan. 
so these underserved borrowers would always had tough time getting loans from banks but this is not the case now because uh, artificial intelligence underwriting solutions can help banks to assess borrowers with little or no credit information they what they do is they uh, they evaluate this based on the other transactions that the customer is doing not credit transactions but the other transactions maybe he is using his atm card maybe he is using phone banking maybe he is using online banking so all these small touch points with the bank are being used to evaluate your credit information based on ai solutions uh, i would like to mention here that state bank of india has dispersed 21000 crores during the lo lockdown last year with, uh, with ai based pre approved loan platform 21000 crores which is a very big amount SBI has also launched an agri based loan product called Safal which is safe and fast agri loan which is focused on organic cotton growers which use uh, which uses artificial intelligence so we cannot say that ai is only restricted to the urban clients or people who are tech savvy but has already found its way deep into rural india the other uh, what you call the use of artificial intelligence which is quite prevalent in banks is um, uh, fraud detection and prevention uh, you often hear about cyber criminals which is quite common in india that um, who steal bank account details or credit information through various uh, credit card details through various uh, means and then use them to fraudulently do transactions and withdraw money from your uh, account if these transactions are not stopped in a timely manner it becomes very difficult to or sometimes impossible to recover this money later uh, banks are now deploying machine learning models that can detect suspicious transactions in almost real time stop them immediately and alert the relevant authorities so this is happening on the fly now it is not that prevalent across the banks in india <coughs> but <coughs> it has started <coughs> it has, sorry it has started uh, taking uh, shape it is not uncommon that the second is that uh, insurance claims so banks are also uh, into bank uh, bank insurance where we also have insurance policies sbi is uh, having sbi life insurance sbi general so uh, we always get these false insurance claims and if the claims are not identified in advance insurance companies like banks can end up paying a, a lot of money to these fraud claimants a report suggested that the insurance fraud resulted in a loss of 80 billion dollars in 2019 alone like 2019 there was a loss of 80 billion from fraud claims to the insurance company just see the magnitude of the amount another report has suggested which shows that how ai solutions have helped companies increase fraudulent claim detection by nearly 66% so they are able to save or prevent Yeah, fraudulent claims from getting encashed by nearly two thirds. So it is only what they are left with is one third. And going uh, forward, that too may be blocked. Then coming to the third point in this fraud detection is detecting anomalous transactions. See, State Bank of India or Indian banks, the number of transactions is huge, and it becomes next to impossible to monitor all these transactions through the what you call the heritage banking systems, technical banking systems, the computer systems. So, uh, how do we keep track of all these transactions where there is some anomaly in the transaction which might warrant uh, uh, what you call a, a further scrutiny? So, uh, in this case, again. banks uh, machine learning has come to the rescue of uh, uh, banks and machine learning models are developed which spot these anomalous transactions they can detect these transactions in real time and send alert to maybe the users register mobile or um, uh, to confirm the authenticity of the transaction uh, the fourth point that is atm frauds here again i think most of you will be surprised to know that in india atm frauds account for uh, as you know that they all they account for a significant portion of the total frauds that happen banking frauds but now what banks are doing is that they are in, uh, what you call installing ai based facial recognition cameras within their atm machines and what these cameras will do is they will analyze each and every withdrawal 
on a real time basis when the customer is withdrawing and this information is getting processed in an ai model which is sitting on back of this system and if an anomaly is detected in the expressions of the customer and it matches with what the machine model uh, has been configured to alert it will stop this transaction immediately so don't be surprised that tomorrow if you go to an atm and you are not able to withdraw cash and everything seems to be fine maybe your facial expressions made the machine think that you are doing a fraudulent transaction so this gives you an idea of uh, how banks have started using technology to capture even the facial uh, expressions of people and matching them with ai based solutions all such major majors all the majors that i have discussed in this slide are contributing to reducing risks in banks and also costs and who is to benefit banks as well as the customers then we come to the what you call uh, the most important topic uh, as far as regulatory compliance goes what is aml so anti money laundering uh, in today's digital age we are struggling to prevent new financial crime with old technologies the what you call the uh, culprits or the fraudsters are way ahead and have also started using ai models to create new methods to uh, what you call to launder money current aml uh, compliance processes are dominated by high level of manual repeated uh, tasks that are highly inefficient at disrupting money laundering activity the volume of false positives in aml screening process is one of the biggest concerns for banks at sbi frankfurt i'll tell you a uh, first hand example at sbi frankfurt we have more than 100 daily hits in our aml blacklist application checking application and all of them have turned to be false positives for so many years now but we have to scrutinize each and every of these false positives and just imagine the effort that is required to subsequently release these messages uh, i mean it's enormous and what happens is that there is always a chance that on some day when there is an actual transaction that fits into this money anti money laundering concept we will not be able to notice it under this heap of false positives so machine learning models have been developed to help detect changes in customer behavior by analyzing their transactions this will make it possible to detect customers with suspicious activity sbi has already introduced such a system in our london office uh, some months back then uh, kyc aml are very critical for banks and i tell you that omissions uh this is a zero tolerance area for regulators and if there are any omissions they can have very serious consequences one of the consequences of not managing your kyc and aml is that it can result in regulatory penalties on this slide you can see that i have listed the top 3 penalties that were levied, levied on banks in the year 2020 for non compliance so wells fargo had to shell out 3 billion dollars westpac 1.3 and jp morgan 920 million dollars so just imagine that how big the consequences for a bank can be for non compliance with aml regulations so regulatory requirements are changing more frequently now you uh, if i can see 10 years back and now rbi is coming with far more changes in india about how banks have to conduct themselves than it was uh, say uh, 10 years back so this uh, uh, i'd like to tell you that uh, banks are right now incurring a cost of nearly 20% on meeting the compliance requirements 20% of their operating costs so if a bank like state bank of india is spent spending 100 rupees on operating costs which includes all the expenses that state bank is bearing 20% is going to the bucket which uh, caters to regulatory compliance so just a one fifth of the operating costs are being borne by uh, are being incurred on uh, regulatory compliance so this is how complex the regulatory compliance field is becoming here again technological innovations in ai are helping banks to reduce this burden uh, in europe uh, there were two regulations which have come in the last few, uh, couple of years one is gdpr and the other one is psg2 so both of these regulations if 
the consequences uh, like these are voluminous re uh, regulations hundreds and hundreds of pages of regulations and then you have to cross check it with some other uh, what do you call regulation then that goes into some other regulation so it is so complex that it becomes next to impossible for banks to uh, to comprehend and to take action points out of these regulations so here again ai is coming to the rescue of banks uh, there is a concept in ai called robotic process automation what is this what it basically does is that it it digitizes all your uh, what do you call textual content and uh, draws inferences from that so what is happening is that when we have fed all the gdpr all the psg2 regulations into this system we will get basically action points of how these uh, G, uh, regulations are going to affect state bank of india or say commerce bank and this this uh, what you call uh, 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 this uh, transformation of a uh, of a uh, of uh, thousands of lines of text into something which is doable is helping banks understand the regulation and also minimize the cost of implementing the re regulations then uh, we uh, improving uh, process efficiency like am screening i have already told you that uh, ai solutions are reducing the number of uh, uh, what do you call it, false positives so that the bank staff is more uh, capable of uh, understanding uh, or devoting time to uh, the uh, to the transactions that matter so if i have to um, like evaluate 100 Uh, false positives a day, and if I have to evaluate just two transactions that are uh, that are in my ML system, definitely I can devote more time on these two and dig, dig deep into them. And then uh, uh, regulatory uh, changes. I have already touched that they uh, these changes are being uh, like uh, banks. Uh, yeah, this na natural language processing, which is part of robotic process automation, is helping banks to. Uh, to understand the regulations that are new regulations that are coming and how they are going to impact banks so like a geographically diverse bank uh, uh, or a company say it has a office in uk and it has a office in singapore through this process of nlp and robotic process automation they will be able to determine in a very short span of time whether the changes in uk will have an impact on their singapore operations or not which in uh, if you remove ai from this concept will take them ages and a lot of effort and money to uh, get this information now uh, this is the last uh, slide for uh, this uh, I, i mean uh, the last topic for discussion today that is how ai is going to uh, what you call affect careers in banking so in all my previous slides i have highlighted how ai is streamlining and rationalizing processes and resources for the bank the very idea of artificial intelligence it's obvious that it will strike fear in the hearts of workers who suspect that they will be replaced by machines there is no question that some jobs will be lost but let me tell you that some others will also be created like data scientists or chat analyzers chatbot analyzers and still others will transform themselves into something like something different like bot designers bot supervisors or ai testers and in some cases i think ai will do the extra work that nobody wants to do surveys have shown that 70% of the front office jobs will be dislocated by ai they will be replaced by chatbots voice assistants and automated authentic and biometric technology as ai based anti money laundering and anti money anti fraud monitoring softwares become more common the need for uh lines of financial managers and compliance officers will take a hit definitely they they will be uh, they will be adversely impacted but there will also be roles that ai will eliminate uh, will create uh, there will be new opportunities uh, like uh, uh, robotic process automation which i already discussed in the uh, previous uh, slide has saved banks 60% in operating costs 60% in operating costs incurred on for the same activity before robotic process automation so now what banks are doing is they are trying to find new ways of using these softwares now comes a question that where will entry level jobs exist so uh, like as a teller 
or an AML uh, 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 assistant, um, uh, if robotic process automation and AI are going to replace all these jobs, then where do students like you who look forward to pursuing careers in financial sector find entry level jobs from some years from now? So it's really a difficult question at this point of time to answer. But one thing is for sure that companies in future will prefer to hire people who have some sort of an understanding of technology in addition to their specific domains. Like in your case, it would be administration, business uh, administration, business management, commerce, and so on. So the bottom line is that students in every field will have to enhance their skill sets to include IT or programming to some extent, some extent to increase their chances of finding a job. Then comes the question that what about people who are not good at maths, science and programming? So in that case, there will still be a layer of professionals who will act as a connect between the customer requirements and the backend programmers. There will also be roles where human empathy and ability to connect with customers is still required and is important. So people with high emotional quotient will still be needed to fill in these, uh, fill in these roles. There was a survey conducted by Accenture, which gives you, uh, which gives us all hope that the effects of AI in banking will result in more satisfied employees and will have minimal effect on hiring. Some bankers and observers have suggested that only the boring parts of the job, like data entry, filling out forms, uh, will disappear, so that humans and bankers here will have more time to focus on interesting tasks and that no actual jobs will be lost. In the Accenture survey, what you can see on the uh, slide, uh, released last year, 67% of bankers felt that AI will improve the work-life balance of bankers, and 57% expect it will expand their career prospects. So we can relate, uh, I'm, I know uh, if uh, some of you know, in the early 90s, there was computerization in banks. So we can correlate what is happening because of AI now to how computerization in banks evolved in the early 90s. There were at that point of time, large scale apprehensions that uh, there will be layoffs due to the computerization. But what happened was that a demand for newer skill sets in banks shot up and even the existing workforce was able to adapt to the new environment. So a whole, a whole new ecosystem came up to cater to these new technologies driven by banking, uh, creating further uh, what you call job opportunities. So I'm optimistic that the same will hold true for AI as well. As banks will increase their profit profitability, uh, they will try to expand into newer areas, newer horizons, resulting in more jobs. AI will allow bankers to be more creative and spend more time on productive tasks. Currently, we are uh, in a very early stage of uh, what you call uh, AI evolution in banking, uh, the narrow AI. And uh, what you know that a banker is a multitasker. Uh, as a banker, well, uh, 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 on one instance, you are attending a meeting. On another instance, you are attending a customer. On third instance, you are doing a credit proposal. On fourth instance, you are doing some reconciliation. So this multitasking, the banking, as a concept, as a job, is a multitasking environment. So AI will take time to get into each of these aspects of banking. So there will definitely be a lot of job opportunities still in the traditional, uh, what do you call the traditional setup of banking uh, for some, at least for the next decade. As the audience for today's webinar uh, is all commerce graduate, commerce students. So my advice to all of you would be to gain expertise in some specific domain and supplement your education with some short courses in computers. Uh, it could be like starting something as simple as Microsoft Excel and then moving on to Access. Or if you are comfortable upgrading it to languages like Python or uh, database uh, like, uh, like Oracle and so on. Uh, this will definitely increase your chances of securing a job when you complete your education. So uh, this is in fact the second last slide. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the new world of banking. Basically, is that the job profiles in banks are going to change now, but uh, the traditional uh, what you call the hirings will also continue. 
So uh, as you can see, the first point is that in uh, in just three years, there was what you call, um, uh, uh, um, there was a new, uh, what you call, a profile that was uh, there in National Australian Bank called Cloud Engineers. And there were just seven, uh, three years back, and they have skyrocketed to 1300 now. ING Bank has, uh, 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 what you call, they have, uh, they have a new, uh, profile which is called customer journey experts so this is something this is a person who will translate customer requirements to the computer engineers so this is a kind of a profile which was not uh, heard of a business analyst is something which fits into this but this takes it uh, to a different, uh, uh, different level and a uh, total of uh, as you can see there is a lot of optimism even because of COVID, even because of all the slump in the world economies because of this pandemic, there are still 1.5 million vacancies posted in the uh, banking industry on uh, LinkedIn. Then a uh, uh, major chunk of this belongs to digital professionals, designers, programmers. Uh, if you go to Stepstone or other job hiring sites, you will find numerous, numerous uh, 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 what you call hirings in banks still going on, still going on. So in, uh, I'll give you an example in uh, State Bank of India Frankfurt, we have hired five people during the last one year. So local, five local people during the last one year. So uh, banks, even in this pandemic, are still expanding and the need for uh, the, uh, what do you call, the traditional, the people who can do traditional banking is there, is will remain there. But they have to, what you call, uh, uh, adapt start adapting to the new AI based uh, solutions uh, and the sooner they do the better. Uh, as you may know that State Bank of India is now hiring uh, 5,400 business associates. This was just last month the ad was there and uh, they are asking for graduates in any field. So you should not be disheartened that if you don't know IT or if you don't know anything that you won't be able to get a bank job. That's not the case. But the point is that in future if you have to if you get into a bank and then you have to step go up the ladder you have to be proactive you have to be proactive from right now so you have to have develop skills that will what you call uh, make you more uh, comfortable in adapting to the new uh, evolution in banking uh, that is happening and uh, this will do a whole lot good to your professional career so once again this is the end I thank uh, uh, Mr. Batra, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar Garg, uh, and uh, the uh, co-conveners, uh, and uh, the convener, sorry, uh, Dr. Sharma, and the co-conveners, Professor Ajay Pal, Professor Madhvi, and Professor Ashwini Gupta, uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak to the students of Commerce Faculty, and hope that the students will take some cues from this presentation. Uh, I wish all the students very best in their careers. Stay safe, stay healthy, and get vaccinated. Thank you all once again. Uh, uh, thank you, Vikas ji. Uh, so much information you have given in uh, uh, less time. Now, without taking much time, I would like uh, I would now like to invite Dr. Sunish Sharma, convener of this talk, to for word of thanks. Dr. Sunish Sharma ji, please. I think uh, in a, such a short span of time, see, Vikas ji touched most of the aspects of artificial intelligence in bank banking and prospects of career in banking in a very effective and simplified manner. Now it's my, uh, my duty to thanks our guests and participants. I, Dr. Sunit Sharma, on behalf of IBPG College, Department of Commerce and Management, to thank with all my heart today's webinar speaker and our distinguished guest, Sri Vikas Rajdanji, Senior Vice President, Systems SBI Frankfurt, for sparing their precious moment and delivering such an intellectual and interesting international talk on artificial intelligence in banking. I would really 
like to thank Shri Dharambir Batraji, our worthy president of IB Managing Committee, other respected members of Managing Committee, and our dynamic principal, Shri Ajay Kumar Garji, who always inspire us for conducting such productive events for the students and provides us every possible support. I would also like to thank all the participants of the webinar, without which this event can't be possible. I would like to thank all the organizing committee members, common staff members, who took such an initiative and put their best efforts for conducting this webinar, especially Shri Ashwini Gupta ji, without his initiative, such informative talk can't be possible. My thanks would not be completed if I forgot to thank MS team, which made this event possible. <laughs> Once again, thank to all of you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Dr. Sonikji. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, now it's time to end our today's international talk program. I again thank Vikas Rajdhan ji. Thank you, Vikas ji. Aage bhi hum aapki sevaayin lete rehenge. Thank you. Thank you. So I will request all to please leave the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.